go to get you by the goosebumps, goosebumps. Gotta get you by the goosebumps, gotcha. They go to get you by the goosebumps, goosebumps. Gotta get you. By Hello the and welcome back to Drunken Book Club. I'm your host, Christopher the Me Joined with. I'm gonna steal your body, Sam. Bitch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and today we read the classic, and I mean classic goosebump story, Why I'm Afraid of Bees, number 17. Oh man, this is, uh, this is kind of the, a big a deal in my opinion, because this is the, the, po- like, after the first 16, we're in weird, like, for the most part, there's some, like, kind of, like, normal ones that are just like, okay, yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, and stuff like that, you know, you got your vampire breaths, your werewolf skins, you know, the sequels to Monster Blood, stuff like that. But you also have, like, a lot of weird ones like, why I'm afraid of bees. I don't even know. <laughs> there's a lot of weird ones. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of weird ones. I mean, they don't get weirder until way later, but this one I feel like is a good prime example of an early weird one of just, like, what were they thinking? <laughs> yeah. It definitely feels like he was watching or reading something that made him go, yes, I want to. This boy will switch bodies with me. Buzz, buzz. So, Sam, as always, I like to ask the question, what did you think this one was going to be about? What did you think Why I'm Afraid of Bees was going to be a boot? So I vaguely remember the twist from that one quizzer we did. Yeah. Where you had us guess the twist endings. Yes. And with this one, I kind of knew what it was about. And my brain, through power of association, went with Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, where Bart... (laughs) Switches places with the fly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the classic The Fly uh, parody. Fly versus fly. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I could could see that being kind of like what you might think this one would be. Yeah, it's kind of what I was... Are we just going to make that for every bee? I'm a bee, I'm a bee, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bee. Uh, maybe it's possibly... <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see, I suppose. Yeah. So, all right. And normally we would say what we pre-gamed on, but I, I've i been freaking dealing with allergies. I'm on allergy pills. I have a little... I'm a little hoarse. That You can probably hear that a little bit in my <laughs> voice. No, this is bee cast, Sam. <laughs> Not horse cast. Get out of here, you pony person. I actually have the hollow coconuts that I could do the. Yes, I know. But we were going to have tragi- uh, time for the uh, top five anime deaths here. We were going to have honey whiskey today. We went to BevMo yesterday. And I was like, oh boy, I cannot wait to have this. Honey whiskey is one of my favorite things to have. And unfortunately, uh Due to me dropping the bottle outside, it broke open, and we don't have any honey whiskey. But I also, I mean, I really shouldn't be drinking when I'm on allergy pills as well. I'm going to say again, I promise I will get you more when Sam, you're not on allergy pills. Sam was nice and said she would get me some more, which I'm very thankful for. And that that, that bottle was $4 off. <laughs> Rest in peace, bottle of Jack Daniels Tennessee honey whiskey. Though I will say... uh. That was a very good smelling accident. Yeah. It smelled like honey outside for a while. Yeah. Like, I left the bag out there, because it was in a bag, obviously. I left it out there because I was like, I'm not, I I have too much shit in my hands. Let's just go inside. I'll pick it up later. And, like, when I came back, I was like, damn, it still smells really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> let me pull a Barney and just start sucking it out of the ground, you know? <laughs> no. So, alrighty, well, let's get into this one with the cover. This one is a stinker. Sam, do you agree with those words? Do you think this cover is a stinker? Yeah, it's not a good cover. Yeah, we have a child's head with a crew cut attached to the most horrific looking bee body. The child's expression is confused, as if wondering why you would choose this Goosebumps over something else. Why don't you get the shark book or something? I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) No, I, I think I'd rather pick this one up than Deep Trouble, but that's just a personal thing. Alrighty, and folks, I think I'm going to stop doing the synopsis, chapter by chapter synopses, and I'm just going to grab these off of the Goosebumps wiggies, because I really like how some of these are worded <laughs> and how wrong they are, especially if they have a TV show episode, so bear with me, and uh, Sam will t- say say a very special line if there's something wrong, right? Yes. <laughs> Since we don't have weeks. Yes. 
I should just pull that quote. I should I'm just the cut new that. Weiss. <laughs> it is a hot July day in Millville, and Gary Lutz is alone in his backyard when he hears a buzzing sound. Gary assumes that one of Mr. Andretti's bees escaped. Mr. Andretti, Gary's neighbor, is a beekeeper. Also an asshole. Yeah. Like, like, He's just a dick. Like, like Mr. Andretti, like, I don't know why I gave him, like, like, I, I imagine him being, like, olive skinned man who's, like, probably, like, Italian and it's just like, get stop walking while you're looking at me, you asshole kid. Like, fucking throwing shit at fucking Gary. Yeah. Like, Andretti's an asshole. Yeah, like, and he's, like, mad about the kid watching him, like, beekeep, and it's like... Yeah, it's like, he's showing interest. How about, you know, it's not like you're doing it freaking naked, dude. Yeah, it'd be one thing, it'd be one thing, like, if he was staring into his window at night, like, right? watching him masturbate, but he's watching him fucking beekeep in the backyard. Yeah, like, calm down. Fuck Andretti. He's an asshole. Uh, so Gary peers into Mr. Andretti's backyard, and he discovers that Mr. Andretti is covered in bees. Mr. Andretti screams that the bees are out of control, which frightens Gary. After a few moments, Mr. Andretti admits that he was only joking. Gary is regularly bullied only by other, only by other kids. That's that's weird phrasing, right? Only by other kids. Yeah. Like it's just like it, just say he's bullied by other kids. Well, because like to be fair, it did make sense of like he's like great now the adults are bullying me. Yeah. It was bad enough I was getting bullied by the, those three fuckheads. I guess I guess if I finish the sentence. So he's upset that adults are now picking on him, which, I don't know, I feel like Andretti's always picked on him. Like, it feels like it's, like, an always thing. He's just a douchebag. And he's just an asshole neighbor. Gary goes and plays softball with some local kids, but he embarrasses himself with his poor playing style. Which, oh my god, I love that there's a Gary Lutz role of, he gets four strikes before he's out. <laughs> Ouch. Damn, yeah. <laughs> Poor Gary. What a loser. He goes home and he's beat up by three local bullies. <laughs> like, it's just one of those days we don't want to... <sighs> uh, after a short while, Gary goes bike riding. Gary tries to impress two girls from his school, but he crashes his bike. So something that I'm like, I don't know if it's a thing and I need to look up. Yeah. Is he was talking about his bike and it said like a 21 speed bike. Yeah, I thought that was weird too. I had, I want to say a six speed. Yeah. And I think I've heard of like eight speeds. I've heard of eight speed. I don't think they go up to 21 I, speed. I'm like, what would 21 do after a certain point? Like that many <sighs> degrees. I don't know. Because I get there's like different, the whole idea is for like different terrains. Yeah. But for like... At 21, I'm like, I feel like that's that's a little extra. It's, it's a bit extra. Disappointed, Gary goes home and begins playing on his computer. Gary consults a forum in the hopes of beating a villain in a video game he plays. Gary sees an advertisement that advertises something strange. Vacations from your life? The company claims that they can help their customers switch bodies with someone else for a week. The next day, Gary walks to the address stated in the advertisement. There, Gary finds a plain building. Inside, he meets an employee of the company. The woman explains that the that the company, Person to Person Vacations, can help him switch minds with other kids his age. The woman, Miss Carmen, takes Gary's photo, and she tells him that she will add it to the company's catalog. But he needs to take off his shirt and play on this skate this uh <laughs> the surfboard the surfboard game. Oh, uh, so I did look it up. Twenty one speed bikes do exist. Okay, they're then. more common with like mountain bikes, mm -hmm. and they're like they are usually like a fancier bike. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I can see why his dad's really pissed off that he broke that bike. Yeah, because it basically, whereas, like, an 8-speed I don't think has as many gears, mm -hmm. there's three gears in the front and, like, seven in the back. Okay. So, I can see, yeah. Yeah. Eh, well, so, I just sense. wanted to check that, because, yeah. When another kid wants to trade places with him, Gary will receive a call. Gary leaves the building and is beat up by the three local bullies from earlier, <laughs> from the previous day. Several days pass. One afternoon, Mr. Andretti pranks Gary again by releasing some of his bees. Gary is upset, but then I thought he this was the next day. I don't remember. Yeah, I thought it was, like, the next day. Like, I thought he was all like, come on, you gotta fucking get me a new body. But yeah, it's not that long either way. Yeah. Um, Gary is upset, but he gets a call from personal person vacations. According to them, someone wants to trade places with Gary. Gary heads back to the vacation company, and he is informed that a boy named Dirk Davis wants to trade places with him. Dirk is cool, but he needs Gary's brain so he can pass an important math test. Gary notices that he didn't close the back door, and a bee starts flying in. Gary closes the door, but the, there's already bees in the building. Miss Carmen straps Gary onto the company's body-switching device. 
the woman switches the machine on. Gary feels a shock shortly before everything goes black. <sighs> when he wakes up, Gary finds out he isn't Dirk Davis. He's a bee. What the bee? Thinking that the transfer was a success, Miss Carmen begins to leave. Gary tries to get her attention, but he can't. Gary flies home and discovers that Dirk is in control of his body. Gary decides that he must return to Miss Carmen's office. However, when Gary goes outside, he's caught by Mr. Andretti and places Gary with the other bees. <sighs> Gary sees the other bees making honey. Gary, knowing that he needs to eat, decides to drink some honey. Which, I don't think bees can eat honey. Like, they don't really eat honey. They eat, like, pollen and create it. Yeah. Like, like they say later, like he drinks the nectar. Yeah, like he does, but like I don't. I mean, I, I guess we could. I could have looked up of like, do bees eat their own honey? Yeah. When Mister Andretti checks on the bees, Gary manages to escape. Gary goes home, but is almost swatted by his sister. Gary flies to his room and finds that Dirk, still in control of Gary's body, is asleep. Bzzz. Gary goes to his computer and types out a message warning his family that he is a bee. Which I love the, uh, hello me. Instead of the help me. Yeah. Dirk wakes up, but he shuts off the computer before he reads the message. Gary follows Dirk and discovers that Dirk has been giving other kids skateboarding lessons in the park. Gary flies to the person-to-person vacations office. Gary notices that there is a microphone at Miss Carmen's desk. Gary begins talking into the microphone and he informs Miss Carmen that he has been transferred into the body of a bee. <sighs> Bees? So, I looked it up, by the way. Yes. Honeybees collect nectar and pollen from flowers. Both are stored in the hive where nectar is converted to honey, and pollen is fermented into bee bread. Bees eat honey and bee bread. Bee bread is a source of protein, while honey is a source of carbohydrates. Huh. Neat. And that is from... The bee book. (laughs) That is... Google AI. They also fly into your penis. Indiana.gov. Okay. (laughs) I want bee bread. It said AI, but it was like... Like, the AI gave that answer, but I'm like, I'm going to look and scroll because I don't trust yeah. it of... It got it from Goosebumps. Yeah. I wonder what bee, bee bread is. Like, is, it, that, is that just the honeycombs? It's for, it's pol- fermented pollen, basically. Okay. I want bee bread. So, it's not the thing they typically go to for food, but... Because yeah. they will go for, like, pollen and nectar. Yeah. But they can, in fact, eat their own honey. Well, there we go. Uh, and he asked to be swapped back into his old body. Miss Carmen tells Gary that Dirk likes Gary's friends and family so much that he won't swap back with Gary. Miss Carmen becomes upset and leaves the waiting room. Gary exits the building and finds Dirk's real body. Gary asks the boy for help, but Gary, sorry, but Gray quickly realizes that a bee is, uh, that a bee is controlling Dirk's body. Um, Sam, can you say the line? A uh, spongy fix it in post or fix it. Yeah, there's no fixing in post. Chris I, fix it. I fix it, but no, I'm going to make you sound like an idiot in posts. <laughs> but yeah, Spongy fix it. Yeah, his name's not Gray, it's Gary. <laughs> also, I feel, like, imagine the parents just seeing the kid just... Oh, I wrote that in my notes of just like, yeah, how would you feel if, like, your son just out of nowhere is just, like, going... And just, like, sniffing flowers all the day and just, like, hey. You're like, honey, you need to eat dinner. Hey. Honey. Hey. Honey, I made your favorite. <laughs> like, like I'd be very concerned if my kid, who's a normal, yeah, like twelve year old, yeah, like I hate to say it, like did he get a brain injury all of a sudden? I'd be Honey, like, please tell me, tell me. I'd, I'd be get, taking him to the emergency room if he started acting like that. Yeah, I would as well. I feel like that's a that's something that is very much missed in this. Of like, that's kind of a true terror of like, like they play it as almost a joke, but I'm like, that's horrifying. Yeah, like just out of nowhere. Boy, boy, be, be boy. Yeah. Be boy, be doing this. Gary then finds Dirk, still in Gary's body, intimidating the three bullies from earlier. Dirk goes back into Gary's house, and Gary follows. Gary asks Dirk for the body back, but Dirk says that he doesn't want to switch back. Dejected, Gary goes outside. Gary is almost attacked by a group of bees. Suddenly, he gets an idea. Gary flies back to Mr. Andretti's hive. Gary gathers a swarm of bees. The swarm follows Gary back into inside his house. Even when he's covered in bees, Dirk refuses to give back Gary's body. Gary, in a moment of fury, stings Dirk. However, Gary slowly remembers bees die when they use their stinger. Gary flies outside and his vision fades to black. The end. Go ahead and finish this, Sam. <laughs> when Gary's vision comes back, he finds that he has returned to his regular body. 
Gary finds the other members of his family and hugs them. Mr. Lutz informs Gary that a swarm of bees are in his room. Gary enters the room and coaxes the bees out using some honey and crackers. A month later, Gary says that he has a new appreciation for life. He's less cowardly, he's improved athletically, and he's even friends with Dirk. The book ends with Gary kneeling down and sucking pollen from a flower. <laughs> the end. B end. Be do 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 do. <laughs> that was a very not spooky ending, and it wasn't even a good, like, funny twist ending, I feel like. Yeah. So. It would have been, it'd been kind of interesting if he's back in his body. Yeah. And, like, the dark ending of Dirk's still a bee. Yeah. Like, mentally, and then it's like, what happened to Dirk? Right. Is he dead? You know what's the worst part? Is that, that B returns to, to his body and is dead now. So if, okay, hold up. So if in these fake, so this is implying that if one of the kids dies inside the, one of their bodies, the other kid dies and is returned to their now dead body, but the other kid gets to live. Yeah. So like, that's kind of, that's, that's weird, fu- That's right? actually like weirdly dark. That's kind of fucked. Yeah. <laughs> that is actually a lot spookier when you think about it. Cause, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, yeah. I kind of just realized of like, that's kind of fucking. Because at first it's just kind of silly of like, haha, he likes Paul and no. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha no. But no. Gary no. committed committed suicide. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kermit. Kermit. <laughs> do not commit suicide. <laughs> so, Sam, do you have any notes? So, it was a pretty fast-paced book overall. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have that many notes. Like, it was a pretty well-paced. All and, right, I'll, yeah. I'll go over mine then, and you can comment on my shit. Sounds good. This book warns us that there will be hundreds of bees in this story, but most colonies have thousands of bees, actually. Like, I believe it ranges from, like, 20 to 40,000 per yeah. uh, per colony. So. so, yeah. RL, go. you need to double read your bee book, bitch. RL, fix it. RL, fix it. And I have the reprint version, too. He needs to do another reprint and get it fixed. <laughs> Gary is such a loser. I love him to death. He has such a terrible childhood so far. Last picked in baseball, there's a special four-strike rule, he's out, his neighbor is a fucking asshole, and three of the toughest-sounding bullies, too. Barry, Marv, and Carl with a K? Yeah. Like, my boy, my boy Gary has it rough. Yeah. No wonder, I love that he was just like, I don't know if I want to switch places at first, and then he's just like, no, my life fucking sucks, I need to switch places now. Well, and it's also like they don't even beat him up for specific reasons. Like, just not do because- it because they're assholes! It's not even like a, you lost the game, Yeah, we're gonna beat you, or one of those kind of things. But you know what I did? You know why? Because hmm. I lost the game. <laughs> it's not 2008 do not, anymore. Do not commit suicide. <laughs> Gary refusing honey on his peanut butter sandwich is a travesty. My homeboy, that shit is better than a PB&J. Yeah. 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 When he was like, ew, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, if he doesn't like honey, you know. Yeah. But that shit is good. My God, he's so pathetic. Even his little si- sister is able to torture him. And I also love that it's, uh, he, it says er, uh, later on in the book that she could probably beat me up too. Yeah. It's like, my dude, you're this pathetic. <laughs> it's like when we'll have kids, <laughs> the, the little sister's definitely going to beat up the older brother. <laughs> Because the little sister's going to be like me while the brother's like you. Yeah. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> no. He's going to talk like Patty. No, I will talk like this. Honey, can you stop talking? No. <laughs> I'm showing do it because you keep laughing. <laughs> <laughs> this company feels a bit sus. They advertise online to kids. They have clientele that are kids. And they have a book with pictures of kids after the body swap. This feels like an after-school special waiting also, to happen. Also, you don't have parents' permission. Yeah. For kids doing something like this. like Yeah. Like, there's a lot of weird kind of stuff going on. But, hear me out here, though. If you're a trans kid and you're, you know, like, let's say trans, trans boy and trans girl, they find each other and they're like, oh, I want, you know, the feel like the opposite sex yeah you know this is kind of a cool like neat concept and you know you yay if you got hateful spiteful parents you know in some ways i'm okay with this but in in this in this point area of just in this book of just like i want to switch switch bodies so i can be athletic or whatever i just want to have a vacation from my parents yeah no like i can i can see there being a good reason to do this of like you know yeah like that what you said of like you know some trans kids might not be able to you know 
because their parents are fucking douchebags, closed-minded or whatever. Yeah. And they finally get the chance to kind of experience this. And who knows? Maybe neither one will want to trade back and they'll be able to grow up and grow in a body that they actually like. Yeah. And if so, good for them. But then one dies and the other one has to return to the body. And it's tragic again. Oh, and then it's even worse because if they've gone through puberty. Oh, right. Uh, oh. What are these? Oh. Uh. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I dressed like this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to make a shirt or a bookmark that says bees could if bees could cry with a crying bee on it. Cuz there's literally a part where like Gary's like if bees could cry and this I is know what it feels is- like when bees cry. <laughs> like literally that line made me laugh so hard and I was just like I want that on a shirt or a bookmark so bad. Just the, if bees could cry, dot, 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 and that's it. And just have a, a picture of a bee and just a fake, like a big cartoony, like a realistic bee and then a big cartoony ass tear. <laughs> would you, would you use that bookmark, Sam? Yes. Okay. That's all I needed. Join our Patreon for that bookmark this year. That's this year's bookmark. <laughs> I'll make it. I'll buy. I'll buy the rights to a bee picture and the tear dro- and make my own teardrop, or I can f- take a picture of my own bee. I don't know. Can't be that hard to take a picture of a bee, right? My dad probably has a picture of a Stop bee. Stop moving. Ah, uh, the ultimate question: Should I commit suicide and sting the person I hate? Because <laughs> uh, he he questions if he should sting Mister Andretti because he fucking yeah. hates Mister Andretti. But he's like, I don't want to die. Yeah. Poor Gary. Even Dirk is a better Gary than him. <laughs> And yeah, that's it for because my last one is just the question that you already asked of or what what are Dirk's parents like right now? No wonder he doesn't want to return. His parents don't give a fuck. Yeah, because you would think again, like if I was seeing my kid not go from being a normal twelve year old kid to being basically nonverbal. Yeah, not eat normal food. Oh my god, it's <laughs> this is it's that's literally us. That is literally the movie Us. That's literally what happens in Us oh my when god. she switches places with the tether. Oh my god! And I would right. know that because I watched it recently. Even especially after what's called, we talked about it on uh, on Drunken Book Club. Like I think we were saying, oh, I really want to watch Us, but it's like not streaming anywhere. Literally that weekend, I found it streaming and I watched it. Terrible idea. It was the weekend when you were away, and I'm like home alone, and it's like dark, and I keep hearing noises outside. I'm like, <laughs> oh, is god. my tether coming for me? <laughs> like I was legit kind of like freaked out for a little bit, but I was able to get to sleep pretty easy. Yeah, that was Labor Day weekend. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had a dog that just did not believe in personal space. Yes. Sweet dog, though. Yep. All right, Sam. What do you think inspired this time? The movie The Fly. That is that is definitely one of the inspirations, but normally I would... Hey, you know, hey, this is Mr. Chris here. I've actually got two literary pieces that I didn't need to p- pull out my ass because they're actually true. Okay. Because one, technically The Fly is based on a short story. Oh. So I, you know, obviously he's probably went for the movie because, you know, it's it's a fucking 50s, uh, 60s, 50s, 60s B movie. Him, B movie. He stole it from the B, the literal B movie that didn't come out for another like 10 years. Yeah. He was like, why, uh, why'd you rip me off? Uh, don't be like that. I'm Jerry Seinfeld. I dated an 18 year old when I was in my 30s. I thought it was like a 16 year old. I don't fucking know. I'm a creep. Creepy. R.L. admits he took inspiration from the 1966 sci-fi book Mind Swap by Robert Sheckley. Both stories have our protagonists swapping minds and getting into misadventures. Like, literally, the idea of the story is take a vacation from your own body. He literally took from yeah. that story. And this person is pretty much having a tough time getting back to his own body. And So, yeah. Yeah. And it is actually a, a sci-fi comedy. So, yeah. I was actually kind of interested. I kind of wanted to pick it up and read it, but... I've got goosebumps to read. <laughs> and yeah, and also, obviously, The Fly feels like a pretty obvious reference. Cause, yeah. Duh. Even though it's not said. Alrighty. Random question section, Sam. Do you have any random questions? I do not. Well, let's get the easy one out of the way. Are you afraid of bees? No. Bees. You're not, you're not telling me that if a swarm of bees came at you, you would you would just stand still. So typically, a swarm of bees is usually trying to look for a place to to find a new. And you, home. Lo- you I'm sorry, Sam, but you are very hive shaped, and they're going to. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't think. But yeah, if they're swarming, they're typically usually trying to find a place to make a hive. Yeah. So I'm not too concerned about that. And singular bees don't 
unless you're like fucking with them. Yeah. They don't. They're not they aggressive. Fuck, they won't fuck with you if you don't fuck with them. Yeah. And I have no plans on fucking with bees. Yeah. I was afraid of bees when I was in sixth grade because I got sung by one when I had a cast on and that really fucking traumatized me. But beyond that, not afraid of bees. That's fair. Ever been stung by a bee though? Yes. It sucks, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to, how old were you? I was like 17 or something. I was waiting for the bus and there's that like, there's, so the bus route I used to go on went on university and then it'd go all the way up to Glen mm. before going down the street that I'd get to to my parents. Yeah. And right by there is right by the U of A. And there's this like little grassy area. Mm -hmm. And I was hanging out with my friend back then. And we're like, let's sit on the grass. It's a nice day out. Yeah. And I lean back and I put my hand down. B. B. And it got like stung right on the palm. Ow. Not a fun time. Yeah, like, no. no. Yeah, I was, uh, so this was in seventh grade. Oh, I took the school bus. I used to get dropped off at a, at a spot. And my mom would pick me up, uh, like, really close by, like, pretty much almost immediately afterwards. Yeah. Like, in, like, five minutes tops, I had to wait. And this was a day where I had to wait, and, like, I just kept on, like, you know, there was a bee that kept bugging me. And apparently there was a bunch of bees, because I didn't realize that there was a hive close by. And, you know, I just swatted at one, and it got me right on my cast hand, and I was freaking out, like, screaming. I was like, ah! Because, like, you know, I'm only, like, 11 or whatever, and I'm like, fuck, this hurts a fucking lot. Yeah. And, like, this really nice lady was like, oh, my God, are you okay? Let me get you to your house real quick. And I'm, like, crying, being like, oh. I live down here. Just keep going. And, like, yeah, like, my parents were like, why did you take a ride? I'm like, because I got stung by a bee. I'm not thinking straight, you know? Yeah, you're panicking. Yeah. And I mean, who knows? I could have kept getting stung if I didn't, if she didn't come over and get yeah. me. Yeah. That was that, that. Then that was why I was at least afraid of bees for a little bit. That's fair. Would you switch bodies with somebody? Maybe. Yeah. Who would you, who would you switch bodies? with? I have like a dark answer. Yeah. And then I have like a not dark answer. Okay. Let's let's hear both. So, not dark dark answer. I'd say probably someone from like a different country, mm -hmm. so I could get like a trip to somewhere without having to pay for flight. <laughs> and they could come here if they wanted to, because yeah. some people really like to see like cactus and stuff like that they yeah. don't get to see. In, like, Europe. I don't know why I'm just, like, thinking of, like, that one boy from Clarence who's just like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I, like, that could be a fun thing. Yeah. Um, my dark answer is there's a certain author <laughs> that I could do the dark thing that we realized if you could kill somebody and then you just go back to your body. <laughs> and sh You're not allowed to do that in this scenario. Damn. You cannot commit suicide. <laughs> what if I at least fix the plumbing in our house so it's not fucking black mold? Too bad. <laughs> you cannot fix... I can't. Fix those problems. So, yeah, that's my only answer. That is to be, like, someone, not necessarily a specific person, but someone else just to... You know what? I would do the same. I was about to say, take a vacation from here and, do like, take a week off and be like, okay, this person's taking a week off. We just switch places. They get to, You get to go to, like, New Zealand and... Yeah. Like, we even, like, are like, okay, let's just mail each other each other's wallets and we're good. Yeah. So we don't have to spend each other's money or whatever. Yeah. And then we can just, like, hang out and... Yeah. Just do yeah. our thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take separate vacations, Sam. <laughs> Just switch into each other's bodies. Yep, <clears throat> that'd be weird. I would do it. I would try it. I, I don't know if it's, I could commit. There's to plenty a week. of anti comics. Come on. Let's just do that. <laughs> See, I'm more worried about like dysphoria. Yeah, because that's the thing of like, would it be dysphoric to go into somebody else's? Or I would just would for be? a day at least. You know, I'd try it for a day instead of like a week. I feel like that's the thing with the thing is like they were like, oh, it's for a week, but I figure they could do it sooner than. As well, because it kind of seems like, you know, because yeah. it was definitely before a week, Gary wanted to switch bodies, you know, and yeah. it seemed like she could do that if she wanted to. I don't get why it was like, oh, Dirk doesn't want to, so too bad. Maybe they, they have to have consent. I don't know. Consent first, Sam. How about that? I mean, but it's also not his body. <laughs> I, I, I don't write the rules. <laughs> All right. And then I have a final question, which I'll be asking from this point on with each Goosebumps book, because there was a lawsuit based around... After the, you know, after, uh, you know, I, I don't know when it happened, but it was based around after the 16th book of Goosebumps came out, they claimed that all the books, or not all books, but some of the books after the 16th were ghostwritten by authors. So I'm going to ask the question, do you think this one was ghostwritten, Sam? I think it could have been. Yeah? It doesn't have, it's, it's tone and some of the descriptions are a little different mm -hmm. than how a typical sign is yes and i completely agree yeah 
I'm going to say, there's just some certain little things that I'm like, it doesn't feel quite the same as some of the originals, but it's not I feel like bad. with Arl Stein as well is he would have changed some of the wording from the stuff he ripped off versus, because he, what the claim also says is that he would write the the outline for it and then give it to someone to write out. And he probably put in the word vacation body, whatever kind of thing. Yeah. And I I have a feeling that if Arl Stein had wrote this, he would have changed it to a different kind of wording instead of being like, okay, this is a blatant rip off of someone else's work that I took kind of thing. Because I feel like he does a good job of like replacing wording, words like that. Yeah. And I don't know. I also just feel like this one just doesn't feel like a Goosebumps book in general or just even an Arl Stein book in general. Yeah. Like it doesn't have like a lot of like the end of chapter Ooh, what's gonna happen now scares like there's some in there but there's it's not like every other chapter like most goosebumps yeah i was books gonna are. say it was a couple of them but not but all not a lot and like in when they were there they were so bad that it just didn't feel like an R. Stein one like the dragonfly one yeah that one was so bad that i was just like okay no like that Arl Stein would have made it a bird and would have made it an actual bird but it was just flying over me Versus, yeah. it was a dragonfly. Okay, whatever. The dragonfly doesn't give a shit. Yeah. The dragonfly. Exactly. So, yeah. I I have a feeling that this one may have been as well. Like, I have a... I'd say 75% chance. 75% okay. chance for me. I'd probably, probably say mine is lower, but I'm also not as committed to the Stein as you are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've committed my life to the Stein. I am a Stein disciple. Yeah, so you're actually like a, a priest for, for just goosebumps. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's it for questions. And Sam, what's your book report? I really like the pacing of this as it goes pretty quickly. It's not one of those where you're just sitting around and going, when are we going to get to the bee factory? Oh, I get I mean, there's bees immediately. Yeah, and just right away. No pocket bees. Yeah. So zero out of ten. I'm kidding. <laughs> I could have sworn someone threw bees in this one, but I was mistaken. I, no, I guess no, it was bees only... were th- no bees were thrown. Yeah. But overall, a pretty solid book, I would say. Like, even if it's not a Goosebumps book, it's a decent book. So I give it probably three and a half... Okay. Out of five. This is a strange tale, to say the least. It may be one of my favorites in concept and have one of my favorite Goose Kids, but this isn't a great Goosebumps book, but I think it's pretty decent. From the start, I love Gary and how much of a loser he is and his journey of realizing how his life isn't so bad once he's lived a few days as a bee, because, like, legit, he literally goes, man... My life doesn't seem so bad now that I've lived as a fucking bee. Take a walk in someone else's shoes some days, you know? I feel like... Also, that's another thing that I would say that this makes it as not like an actual R.L. Stein book. There's kind of a moral here of take a walk in someone else's shoes to see how it is kind of thing. Yeah. R.L. Stein doesn't do morals. <laughs> but yeah, I just feel like the big problem with this one, it just doesn't feel like a Goosebumps book. He... He feels like a, I was about to say, whoever wrote this just feels like a very talented ghostwriter in all honesty. In the end, I give Why I'm Afraid of Bees three Let's the Klutz Slipping on Nuts out of five. And that's the story right there. All right. Next week is a special one. It's Sam's birthday. Ooh. It's my birthday. <laughs> I, I'll never not love that sound bite. And uh, Sam has uh, decided uh, because I recommended it to her on a very specific choose your own nightmare book so we'll see how that one goes we'll see y'all next time around if you enjoy what you heard make sure to like subscribe leave reviews where you can it helps people find us it it really does help and if you really like us join our patreon at patreon.com slash drunken book club you can join for free get all the content about a week later or even sooner you even get the episode up uh, you get the newest episodes a day early if you join for free or you can pay us a dollar a month and you get the episodes about mm, a little less than a week i tend to release them on monday sometimes sundays depending on how i just how i'm doing you know if i if i do it fast enough i mean i probably could have released last week's episode a lot earlier than i could have but i decided not to because i didn't feel like it you also get all the content immediately so you don't have to wait for it like the free people but hey a dollar a month it helps the podcast get better and that's about it i guess we're gonna buzz off right yep i was born with 
this magnet, worn by the dragnet. How about my dirty habits? I got the habit of super glow, deuce bigelow, male gigolo, gold hands, crush cold cans, and Michelo style is Nino, black Benzito, Valentino, Don Vito, boys, evil stilo, hit like the bull, more pull than Magneto, crush kilo with my bare hand, reload the eagle, nine deadly strikes, lethal for your people, burn therapy, chemo, sheep pole, see you through the peephole, in the crime lab, counting dinos, cut and dive staff, then they backed up Chino, rush through the crowd with a hero, slap shot, Jack Pasarino, though, graffiti on the wall, throwing a Remo, can't feel three dice, head crack, Zelo, in, in your air hole, let the sneer roll, go low, lower than low, lower than zero, who's your rhyming heroes? You touch the warning, my dark flash turbo, supersonic, head talk, welcome back like the sweat orc, Bobby Digital, half there to half.